The Polygon add-on brings a world-class PBL library directly into Blender, so you can browse and download textures, models, and HDRIs directly into Blender without opening a browser. In this video, you'll learn how to install it and use it. So first things first, click the link in the description to make sure you're downloading the latest version of the Polygon add-on. And importantly, do not unzip it. Keep it as a zip file, and instead we're gonna click and drag it and then just drop it directly onto the Blender's interface, and it will now install that add-on for us. So I'm just gonna hit OK, and that has now installed it. Also, if you wanna do it the old-fashioned way, you can go Edit, Preferences, Add-ons, and then go in the top right-hand corner there, Install from Disk, and that'll uh, also let you point to the zip file um, and install it that way. But now that we have installed it, if I click N to bring up the properties, you should see the little Polygon tab on the right-hand side. The first time you use it, it'll ask you to log in via browser. So I'm just gonna click that. This will open up your browser, and assuming that you are logged into Polygon, it'll say Login Confirmed, Return to the add-on, and you can see this has now changed because it's detected the login. Now it's asking you where do you want to download the assets to. So if you've already been downloading assets from Polygon, you could just point to that directory, or I'm just gonna download it to the default directory here and hit Confirm. Might have some onboarding tips here, but since we're gonna do it in the video, we're gonna skip through that. All right, so this is the Polygon add-on. Now this is a live version of the website, okay? All the assets on here are the exact versions as the one on the website. So you don't need to use your browser at all. It's a complete replacement. So you could see I could change, I could browse by the texture category and go, you know, just give me brick textures here like this, right? And I can browse here. I could also type in a specific search. I could say, um, I don't know, running, bond, right? And just get bricks that are running bond inside of that category. But let's say make it interesting. I'm going to add in a plane like this. And let's say I'm working on a scene and it's got a brick wall, right? That I, I need brick for. And I, you know, I'm not sure if this is going to be the right fit for my scene. I want to try it out with the rest of the elements in my scene. Um, so what I can do with the add-on is I can just click this little preview icon here. Um, first time you do it, it'll just have this pop up as a once off telling you it's going to be a watermarked low resolution version. But now if I go to my material uh, view at the top there, you can see it's downloaded a low resolution 2K or sorry, 1K version that is watermarked, right? Um, but all the maps are there and it's enough for me to see if the colors are right, if it's going to be a good fit for my scene. And let's say I like it. I'm now ready to purchase. I'm going to hit purchase. Now this has kicked off a download. It's downloaded it, I can just hit apply 2K. And that's it, it's now swapped it out for the real texture that is 2K unwatermarked and it is ready to go. But I don't want 2K, I want something a little bit higher res. I can click the drop down and say, give me 4K, right? Now I can swap that out for a 4K version. And now it's just a little bit crisper. And let's say maybe I wanna change my default preferences, not to 4K, but to 8K. I can click the drop down and go import preferences. And then right down here where it's got default texture resolution, you could set that to 8K. And that means whenever you buy a new asset, it's always gonna download the 8K version. But because I've already downloaded, I just have to manually click it here. And now I can hit apply 8K. I think 8K is excessive for most cases, unless it's an extreme close up. But for this tutorial, you know, I know people like high res, so we're gonna use it. Okay, so there we go, nice and crisp. Now immediately after you've applied something, you can see in the bottom left-hand corner, you've got a Blender's last action dialog box. So if you click that, you can see you've got some extra options here right after you've imported something. So if you've got more than one texture resolution, I could change it right there. I could also change the mapping type to be something else, or I could change the displacement type. So by default, it's gonna be using the normal map only. So it's not gonna be doing any physical displacement. If you wanna use uh, displacement and bump, that's the one at the bottom there. But first, just to explain it, the bump map is gonna be using uh, the, uh, not the normal map, but the displacement map, but as a fake shader. So actually this in our newer textures should be identical to the normal maps bump. There we go, you can see it looks uh, very, very close to the normal map. And then if I go to displacement and bump, we can have physical displacement, but we need to have actual displacement, not a uh, four vertices mesh. So I'm gonna add a subsurf modifier and I'll set this to 10. And you can see that now we've got actual displacement. You probably wanna go a little bit higher so you don't see that jaggedness, but that is uh, basically it. And those settings, by the way, that it's changing there, it's just these ones right here where it's got displacement. So those are the options that we are adjusting for you um, when you change that in the uh, the options there. But also, if you wanted to see your shader, shader editor, you've got it right here. 
all these options are configured correctly. This is SIGB, non-color data, non-color data. The displacement map has got a cubic interpolation, all according to Blender's manual. Uh, the ORM map, by the way, you won't be needing unless you're using a game engine. So in most cases, the Blender is just disconnected, but it's still there. You can see the normal map is also disconnected because we're using the displacement. But if you wanted to change those, you could. We've also got this little handy uh, scale slider here. If you just want to quickly change the scale of a material, you can do that there as well. All right, so that's texture import. Let's just quickly import uh, a model as well. So I'm going to hit N, go up to here, and I'm going to change my uh, asset type to be models. And then uh, let's say, yeah, let's get some retaining wall blocks. Might as well. I'm going to purchase those. Models are super simple because it's just to, to model. There's really less options for it. But I'm going to click that. Now that it's done, I'm going to go import 2K. Um, and there we go. And actually, this one's got more than one model. So they've come in uh, on top of each other, but that's fine. I can move them around um, and there we go. So that's models. And then just to round it off as well, we've got HDRIs. Let's say I want to import this. This one's already been, uh, actually I've already purchased it, but I haven't downloaded it. So I'm just going to hit download and then import. And I won't see it because I'm in material view at the top. But if I go to my uh, rendered view mode, you can see this is the HDRI, which is uh, very, very low powered. But if I increased my uh, exposure, you can see, there we go, the HDRI. So that is how to use the Polygon add-on. The final thing I'll mention, this is the uh, home icon at the top there. That is the live browsing version of the website. Uh, the next one over is your assets. So it's assets that you have purchased, not necessarily what you have downloaded. And then the next one over is your downloaded asset. So it's just reading directly from that directory that you pointed to. Um, and then the, uh, the next one over there is just details about your plan. And then obviously the number of credits you've got there. And if you click this, this will change your preferences. One final other thing to call out as well is occasionally when you are browsing, you will see a missing preview. So a preview will just be empty. If you see that, unfortunately that's a limitation of Blender's UI that we haven't been able to get around. But if you just click the little refresh button at the top there, that'll just reload all of the thumbnails and it'll just try to refine them and then it should appear and load there. But that is it. Hope you enjoy the add-on. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions at all, feel free to reach out to support at polygon.com. Thank you.